I'm Allie with Potomac Beats, and in this Better Beater episode, we are going to talk tools, and we are going to talk about not going out to the tool shed to get some supplies and making sure that you have the right jewelry making pliers so you can do great things in your jewelry making craft. So you may get into jewelry making or see a catalog of ours and realize that you want to do some jewelry making. Now you may look in your garage and realize, oh, I have some tools, I just need to get some wires, some cable, all of that good stuff. Be careful when you are looking at tools that come from your shed or from a little toolbox, and I'm gonna caution and show you why. Yes, these are cutters and snips and chain nose and wide jaw pliers, but you wanna make sure that you have the right jewelry making pliers to do your craft well and not to damage the products that you are working on and also to be able to get up close and fine with the pliers that you are working with. You also may have some pliers that don't have a great cut to it or even some memory wire snips or wire snips or strippers that you have. And you may even look and see if you have some big cutters here and some big snips if you're working with some sheet metal. These are all functional and they will work, but I wanna caution about why you want the correct tools and what to be looking for to see whether or not you do have some tools that will work or you need to go shopping. So to begin, we're gonna talk about chain nose, needle nose, pliers, and what you wanna look for. So I have here two pliers that just came out of a uh, regular old toolbox, and I wanna show you the caution. And make sure that if you do get tools from a craft supply store that you check them out as well. So these are a chain nose pliers. Notice how they have a really, really kind of sharp, rigid edge in the middle of them that they have those lines that you're working with versus the pliers that you would get that are for jewelry making that you can see are nice and smooth. So you can see that rough edge and that nice and smooth edge. Now, why is that important? If I grab a piece of wire here and I grab this wire, and I'm holding the wire and working with it, I can actually, if I push down hard, pinch the wire and get some lines into it. If I'm holding with the needle nose pliers without, that chain nose pliers without the ridges, I'm not going to be damaging my wire. Same thing when you're going in and squeezing crimp beads, you wanna make sure that you have actual crimping pliers or that if you're doing a flat crimp, you use that chain nose. So look when you're looking for your needle nose or your chain nose that it does not have ridges on the interior and that it's nice and flat. And the tools that I'm picking from are all coming from the beginner tool set here um, from Potomac Beads. So that's what I'm pulling from as my examples. The other plier that you wanna be aware of is going to be the wide jaw. So yes, again, wide jaw plier, from a toolbox that's used. Sometimes it will have little ridges as well in it. So just make sure when you're holding and you're gripping. Also, usually they don't have a nice tight grip in the interior. Same thing, it can mark up your wire. So you may want to invest in some nylon jaw pliers. The nylon jaw pliers are exactly like they sound. They have the same jaws, but these wide jaws have that nylon coating or that rubberized kind of plastic coating. So it is not going to mark up your wire or hurt your piece as you're holding about it. So that's kind of what you want to look for. Now you can take a regular piece of, or regular pliers with wide jaw and you can dip them in plastic. People have done that or into resin to dry, but honestly for the price, it's usually best just to get a pair of those nylon jaw pliers. The next thing that I'm going to go into is cutters. So we have cutters of all different kinds and all different shapes. And what do you want and what are you looking for? So when I'm looking for a plier, that is a cutter. I wanna make sure that if I'm working with wire, like this chain link here, I can get really close in and have a flush cut next to my piece and the wire is not going to be really far out. If I try to use a snip, I can't get quite close enough. If I try to use one of the wire cutters, same deal, I can't get as close. If I try to use some regular tools, sometimes my jaws are a little bit further and a little bit bigger than my jewelry making pliers. The jewelry making pliers will have a nice flush cut. You use that first side flat down and that allows you to get closer to the cut, whether or not you're working with wire or whether or not you're working with your cable cord. I do not like these snips, which some people will use for memory wire. I would always suggest getting actual memory wire cutters to cut the memory wire 
rather than using your wire cutters. If you do not have memory wire cutters, now is the time to go out into the shed, grab these big guys and use those to cut your memory wire so that way you are not damaging your wire cutter that came in your tool set. The last thing that I kind of want to address, we're just doing simple tools, is the round nose plier. You are going to have trouble finding, unless you have those long needle nose or needle nose eye jaws, you're gonna have trouble finding the round nose pliers. When you are doing and creating loops in your wire, whether or not it's here, whether or not you're using them to create your ear wires and create those loops as well, you want round nose pliers. Many people will pick up those rigid pliers from their garage, they'll get them and they'll use them to make bends, but to make that nice loop, you really do need round nose pliers when you're working on it. So check that out. The other tool that you might come across in your tool bench would be an awl or a punch. Just make sure that when you're looking at it and the awl and the punch, that again, it's not rigid on the outside, that it does not have any of those burrs on the outside and that it's nice and flat if you are gonna use it for knotting or pulling knots out. So long story short, yes, some tools from this shed will work. However, be cautioned for the price of them. A lot of these tools will end up kind of damaging your project, your wire, or won't get you close enough to what you need to do. If you need to crimp down, if you need to do the wire cutter, it's gonna get you further away from the project. You are doing fine motor skill things, so you wanna have those smaller tools that are gonna allow you to hold them nicely in your hand, not have too much pressure on them, and also have that nice spring action so it is a little bit easier when you're working with them. So yes, you can get started pretty efficiently and pretty effectively by going out and kind of checking what you have, but make sure that if you are using the tools, try to use the right tools and grab just an inexpensive starter kit like we have here. It usually comes in a little case here, and then all your jewelry making pliers are going to be nestled in there as well. Ours also has a little bead scoop, which is great because I use that all the time. And you can do the craft really, really inexpensively with that nice little starter kit and not have to go out to your shed and your garage and try to figure out what tools you can scrounge and you can use. Start off with the right things and that's gonna make the craft way easier. As always, the Better Beater episodes are hopefully made to make you a better beater and give you a little advice on when you're selecting different products, techniques to use, questions answered, or concerns that you may have. Remember, as part of this community, it is so great if you help out and give back to other community members and comment below any lessons that you may have learned using different pliers or any tricks and tips to help others out along the way. If you want to, you can also give a little thumbs up to this video and stay tuned for our next inspirational designs.